They said the truth won't survive beside the lies that maintain the decaying faces of this. And like you can make fun of literally everything Hold the Truth Hostage does. There's like there's no end to the laughs that we can get out of Hold the Truth Hostage. But do I think he's the devil? Yes. You know what I mean? I definitely don't think he's not the devil. Hold the truth hostage. So what? So he's going to hell. How long will it be for um, Hold the Truth says, hands up, don't shoot? Just saying. Uh, oh I, I do honestly oh, think. Man. Is this you? Yeah, this is the real me. Okay, good, man. How you doing? Hey, good, good. Yeah, no, I was um to see the Black Pill guys as that guy hold the truth i call him and please don't get offended by this this is my favorite line from hold the house negro because he's a house negro on that panel and i don't care if anyone gets offended that's what he is yeah and no, i've got a lot of strong words to say to say about these guys and i was really happy that you invited me on to chat um high value black men there there just isn't a lot um i grew up a white guy growing up in new zealand just as it is you know the very first thing people will say when they they see me jump into this like onto this stream or whatever they'll They'll be like, oh, you know, he's alt-right or some sort of underlying racial acrimony, which couldn't be further from the case. And I'm a very, a very liberal guy, very accepting. I've moved further and further away from my sympathy towards 90% of this guy's black manosphere. And that was a completely different kettle of fish as well, because every video, like I, I came into contact with Kevin Samuels, right? I, I found his channel. And every video, he's attacking uh, black women. He, he, he sometimes frames it as just, quote, women. But he always frames it as black women. That's also another another big thing. It's little, I call them house it's little, I call them house negroes. All the little guys that simp for him. All of these buck dancing guys that constantly spam at Kevin Samuels in the title, constantly trying to suck up to Kevin Samuels. They're all denigrating black women. If you refer to them as house negroes, they're like, oh, he's being racist, which of course I'm not. <laughs> If you refer to them as house Negroes, they're like, oh, he's being racist, which of course I'm not. <laughs> it's like some of my favorite you, icons from history. Yeah, you, you have to, I mean, <laughs> this is the thing. It it sounds it sounds a certain way. It does. Like, yeah, it, it does really, sound a certain way. It, it, yeah. it sounds a certain way. I mean, I feel you, but but it, it sounds a certain way. It really totally, do. <laughs> totally. I, I look, I'm sorry. That's just how that's just how I looked at these guys. These guys that are just totally dusty. I refer to them as house negroes. They're like, oh, he's being racist, which of course I'm not. <laughs> that guy hold the truth. I call him and please don't get offended by this. This is my favorite line from Hold the House Negro, because he's a house negro on that panel. And I don't care if anyone gets offended, that's what he is. It's a black man. There it is, man. There it is, right off the fucking top. The fucking black guard. How long will it be for? Um, hold the truth says hands up don't shoot just saying uh, oh, God. I, I do honestly oh, think Pill ill, y'all niggas better listen. I'm black pill ill, y'all niggas better listen. I'm black pill ill, y'all niggas better listen. I'm black pill ill, y'all niggas better listen. I'm black. I'm black pill, I'm ill with this will. 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 It's so important, guys. So, so, so important. By the way, women are the majority of voters in the United States. Like the uh Female content creators help the Manosphere be balanced and prevent the formation of cults. She has agreed to an alliance with me and other balanced content creators who call out the bullshit and hypocrisies. I look forward to see the cat- How long will it be for, um, hold the truth, says hands up, don't shoot? Just say uh, Oh, God. I, I do honestly oh, think- Hey everybody, what's up man? It's Hold the Truth Hostage where if the truth was so important, we wouldn't negotiate with lies, we would hold the truth hostage. Now, this is a video I've been meaning to do for quite some time, you know, probably, this video is probably overdue by probably over a year. And, um, you know, because I did a video called 
I did a video called the pill kit, you know, the pill kit, you know, it's a video I'd recommend you watch if you want to know how to stay black pilled and, you know, you know, basically how to stay and remain on the black pill course, you know, you know what I'm saying? You need, you need to watch the pill kit and now I'm going to be making this video. This video is called the divorce kit. You know, the divorce kit, that's what this video is, the divorce kit. Because, you know, I think um, in the manosphere, you know, give me one minute. You know, I think a lot of guys talk about divorce, you know, somebody getting divorced, somebody who was divorced, you know, a lot of people talk about it. A lot of people talk about uh, guys that's been divorced and, you know, what they went through in getting divorced, you know, what they went through and uh, the expense and money they've spent and what they lost. But, you know, everybody focuses is everybody focuses on what the man lost and, you know, what he's trying to recover and so on. But no one focuses on the mentality needed to basically survive the divorce and walk away basically mentally stable you know what i'm saying so i had to make this video called a uh, pill kit you know the pill kit because you know i think uh we got to approach divorce in uh in an honest black pill way you know basically tell it like it is you know what i'm saying tell the black pill truth about divorce and i think it starts off with accountability. You know, you as a man, the first thing you have to do, I think, when it comes to divorce is you have to take accountability. You have to take accountability that you basically initiated the marriage. You're the one who got on your knees. You're the one who planned for the marriage. You know, you know, that's the basics. That's the basics of it. But the level of accountability comes in where you didn't do your research, man. You didn't do your research when it came to, you know, the marital laws, the laws, the, you know, what's what's at stake. You didn't do no research. You got to look at, um, you got to look at uh, a man who got, you know, got married for love basically is a man who invested into a car because he loved it you know what i'm saying he didn't do research on the lease he didn't do research on you know the upkeep for the car you know how much it'll cost him in the long run and you gotta look at it, it it's deeper than that but i think you have to start off with accountability man you know you gotta start off with accountability and you have to accept the the role you played in it you know, you have to accept that this begins with you and ends with her. You know what I'm saying? That you got to accept it. There's a lot of men out there in the manosphere looking for uh, looking for guys to sympathize and, you know, be angry with them. There's a lot of guys that come out of a divorce just looking for other men to be angry with them. Yo, man, she did this. She took that. You know, the alimony payments, this and that, you know, just looking for anger support. You know what I'm saying? A lot of guys I've talked to, you know, that were divorced here and there are looking for anger support or looking for a lack of accountability. You know what I'm saying? You have to understand that, you know, you initiated the marriage, you know, you got on one knee. And the thing is this, you're the one who said you will do whatever it takes to keep this woman happy. You know what I'm saying? You will do whatever it takes to keep her happy. And you swore that you would basically give up your 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 rights as a man in your life, your livelihood and everything. You put everything on the line just to make this woman happy. You know what I'm saying? So you have to accept the role you played in it. You know what I'm saying? Once you accept the role you played in it, then you can start recovering. You know, you can start looking at yourself and say, damn, man, 
I, I got married, you know, whether I loved her or not, I got married knowing that once I signed up in the court, I basically denounced my manhood and put all the burden on her shoulders about whether this marriage will survive or not. You know what I'm saying? Because I basically made her my, you know what I'm saying, in charge, you know, basically made her your supervision. You know what I'm saying? Because once you marry, you know what I mean, she has the legal advantage. You know what I'm saying? And you chose that. You chose to give her the legal advantage with alimony, divorce. You made these choices, man. The sooner you can accept the choices you made, whether it was blinded by love, lust, whatever you want to call it, you made that choice. You know what I'm saying? You made that choice. You know, you, you know, you made the choice to to get married and so on, you know. And once you accept that fact, you can accept what happens when the marriage ends. You know what I'm saying? And here's the thing, man. A lot of guys will come in the manosphere seeking guys to say, you know, man, what made her angry? What? Why didn't this work? This and that. None of that matters, man. You know, the black pill truth about it, none of that matters. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I'd say, the, you know, none of that matters. Because at the end of the day, you gave her that. You told her her happiness and, uh, you would swear to basically do everything in your power to maintain her happiness. You know what I'm saying? And when she said she's no longer happy, you should have accepted it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times, it's the writing is right on the wall, man. I've seen it where the writing's right on the wall. She's disrespecting them in the public. She's antagonistic at the household. She's giving this man all the signs that she's no longer happy and no longer wants to be in this relationship. But the man ignores it and thinks, oh, we could get through this. We could we could fight. We could do this. We could go to. And, and the thing about it, when you see guys going into marriage counseling, you didn't do nothing wrong. You know what I'm saying? You did nothing wrong. You're you were faithful. You're respectful, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You ain't do nothing wrong. You you do your job, you come home, and everything's normal and balanced and safe, and there's a great safe routine. You know what I'm saying? You didn't do nothing wrong. But here you got this guy taking her and going to, you know, re, you know marriage counseling without understanding that once you step in that marriage counseling, you're accepting and you're promoting the fact that You've been doing something wrong. You know what I'm saying? You're you're once you join that marriage counseling thing, you're basically admitting to her you messed up. You messed up and you're willing to try to be better. You know what I'm saying? Basically, you're you're playing, you've chose to play the role of the person who's in the wrong. You know what I'm saying? You chose that. Rather than just accept the fact that, yo, she no longer wants to be married, man. She no longer wants to be married to you and wants to move on. You know what I'm saying? Wants to move on. You know? And if you can accept, if you would have accepted that, you would have gotten divorced sooner. You would have filed the divorce. Because, you know, in the manosphere, one of the biggest uh, things guys like to bring up is, guys like to bring up the fact that, you know, over 80% of uh, divorces are initiated by the women. You know what I'm saying? Over 80% of the divorces are initiated by the women. But what you'll have missing when you step outside of the Black Pill 3.0 is that you won't understand, you won't add in the fact that out of, oh, out of that 80% of women that filed divorce... Over, you know, over 80% of the men chose to ignore the signs that it was over, you know, that the marriage was over, you know what I'm saying? It was over. So over 80% of the men choose to ignore the telltale signs that, yo, this marriage is over, it's done, it's done, man, it's, 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 it's done. And then the woman has to divorce that man because he won't 
he won't accept the cues. He won't accept her saying she's no longer happy. He won't accept the fact that she's openly antagonistic towards him. You know, she's given him all the signs that she no longer wants to be there. She's making, uh, you know, problems out of a positive situation. I mean, one of the positive situations you hear is, oh, it's boring and we're not doing nothing, which is how relationships are supposed to be. It's supposed to be about stability and routine. And, you know, every once in a while, the, you know, the couple will do something special or something the man will surprise her because he knows the routine. So once you establish a routine, you know when and where and what time to basically organize a surprise. When it's when it when the relationship's in a state of chaos, you can't do none of that. You can't surprise nothing because that that chaos, everything's a surprise. So a lot of guys, man, they tend to look away and uh, basically ignore the telltale signs. You know, basically her turning positive into negative you know her creating issues where there's no issues to be found you know what i'm saying these are telltale signs that yeah man you gotta end it you have to end it file the divorce and it's over you know but you know that that was about accountability the next step a man has to face is man you have to be honest with what you need you have to be honest with what you need a lot of men what they do to justify remaining or fighting for the relationship as it fails is that they make a delusion of what they want you know they make a delusion of we got a house together i can't you know they make a delusion of everything they have together as though they can't afford to move on from it. you know what i'm saying we got a house together, we got this, we got that, you know what I'm saying? When in reality, the man needs far less. You don't need as much. If a man was to look at his needs, you know what I'm saying, the, the divorce would go a lot smoother, you know what I'm saying? Because in the long term, you as a man are naturally more minimalistic. I mean, a lot of men I've spoken to, when they say uh, building up the house, uh, designing it, you know what I'm saying? Spending a lot of money on the house to make it look a certain way, it was their wife's idea. You know what I'm saying? So the wife was spending most of that money to uh, rebuild and decorate the house. It wasn't you. You know what I'm saying? If a lot of men would just stop being delusional and look at what they need, okay, you get a divorce. You know what I'm saying? You get a divorce, you're on alimony. What you do is downsize your lifestyle, man. Minimalize it. You minimalize it. Because here's the problem you got to understand. The problem isn't on you most of the time. It's on her. You got to look at it like this. So she's used to a particular lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? She wants, you know, and it's legally binding. Like I said, you got to accept accountability. You signed up for this. But okay, she's used to a particular lifestyle. You know, let's say you and your girl, you live in the suburbs, y'all own a house together, you get a divorce, she keeps the house. You know what I'm saying? She keeps the house and you're paying alimony, whatever. She has to handle the upkeep, man. She's got to handle the upkeep for the house, the, the, the whole structure and everything like that. The whole structure and the upkeep because she'd rather... And, and here's the scam. You got to understand the scam of the legal system where it says she's used to a particular lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? The court uses that, but that's a big scam. If she's used to a particular lifestyle, that lifestyle implied that y'all were married. That's where how you could tell there's a corruption in the court where they say, well, you got to maintain the lifestyle she's used to and how she's, she's lived. But that lifestyle came at y'all being married you know what i'm saying so the court should really throw that out you know what i'm saying because if she you're not married how can she live the lifestyle that y'all had before divorce when you're not married anymore that lifestyle came with the marriage or whatever but you know that's that's just uh you know a thought here and there but uh basically 
it's this, man. You got to look at it as, okay, she's going to get the house. She's got to upkeep the house, man. She's got to upkeep it. She's got to keep it handled, keep it fixed. You know, all the issues that you were handling, you know, with the boiler and all that stuff, all the issues you were handling to upkeep the house, now it's in her hands. So all the alimony money, a lot of it's going to go to upkeeping the house and all that stuff. She's going to have to work a certain level. Now it depends on if, you know, I'm not talking about the guys that are millionaires and all that stuff. I'm talking about your average divorce guy, whatever. So all the upkeep goes to her. And you, what you could do, man, you minimize your lifestyle. You downsize. Maybe you go from, because I've seen a lot of guys, they get in a divorce and they try to buy a house. They try to buy a house again. They try to get a house and they're talking about I'm struggling to get a house. Dude, when you bought your first house, you weren't divorced. You weren't paying alimony. You know what I'm saying? You weren't paying alimony. You weren't paying child support. So how can you buy a house as though these problems don't exist? You know what I'm saying? These uh, liabilities don't exist. As I talk to a lot of divorced guys, I say, yo, man, I'm struggling to buy a house again. Dude, you can't buy a house. You know what I'm saying? You're putting more burden on yourself. You know you know what I'm saying? You have the alimony. You got other liabilities you're paying for. You know, when you bought your first house, you weren't divorced. You weren't divorced. You weren't paying alimony or you didn't even have a child. You know, you didn't have none of these liabilities. When you bought your first house or your house you bought during your marriage. And a lot of guys, like I said, it's about it's about a lack of accountability and accepting reality. So a lot of guys will struggle trying to buy houses again, trying to buy fancy apartments again. They're basically going to try to live a lifestyle where they ignore the current issues they face, the current issues at hand. You know what I mean? So, so what you do is downsize and minimize your lifestyle. You know, you go from a house to maybe renting an apartment. You know, maybe you go from renting an apartment to renting a room. You got to downsize and minimize your lifestyle. It, it just makes no sense that you're paying alimony and you're potentially paying child support. You know what I'm saying? And then you're trying to throw even more stress by now you're trying to buy a house again. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to buy a house again. And and my thing is this. If you're buying a house to make money, okay. You know, I could see why you're trying to buy a new one. You're like, you know, this time I'm not buying a house for a couple. I'm not buying it as a married man. I'm buying the house as a business. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to try to buy a three-family home as a business. You know what I'm saying? But even then, what you got to do is you have to minimize your lifestyle to be able to afford it because now you have to add in the liabilities man you're you're liable now for alimony and potentially if you got kids you're liable for child support so you have to look at that that you're no longer able to save your money like you used to before you were in this situation you know what i'm saying before you were in this situation you just had your money and you would spend it the way you uh, deemed, uh, you know, deemed um, needed to be spent. But now you're divorced. You're paying alimony. You got money being burned. You know what I'm saying? You got money you're spending that you're not even using. You're just giving for alimony or child support. So what you do is minimize your lifestyle. You know, I've seen a lot of guys I talk to when I've spoken to them where they they just take on more stress. You already got the stress of alimony. You got the stress of uh, child support. And now you're trying to add even more stress with your house, getting another house quickly, you know, getting a bigger car, a better car and all that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of guys try to hide their pain and their suffering with their materialism. You know what I'm saying? I'm, oh, man, I'm, you know, I got divorced, but I, it's all good. I got me a new car and this and that. No, dude, you got to minimize your lifestyle. Once you've gotten divorced, you have to understand, depending on how long the alimony check's going to be, some states is for life, uh, child support, 
might be 20, might be 18 to 25 years. You know what I'm saying? So you no longer can spend like you don't have any liabilities. You know what I'm saying? You don't have any liabilities and things burning your income. So what you got to do, man, is start minimizing your lifestyle. I would even say, you know, let's say you're divorced and you have like a BMW. You you downgrade that BMW, man. Downgrade it to potentially a Honda, a Toyota, you know what I'm saying, a Subaru. You downgrade because now you have this alimony and potentially child support to pay for and you never know when a situation will happen where you can't afford to pay that. So what you do is minimize your expenses. You know what I'm saying? You minimize them as best as you can. So you downgrade your car. You downgrade your living situation. You know what I'm saying? And here's the other thing. The other thing about the divorce aspect is, dude, you're... And I'll get on step three. Step three is that, dude, you're a man. You're a man. Step three is you're a man. You know, you got to realize what that means, you're a man. Now, let's say you got married with your, uh, you got married with your, um, you know what I'm saying? You, you, let's say you got married to your wife, whatever. Y'all didn't have kids. You were married with her from, let's say, 20, she was 22. Y'all married for five years. And you get a divorce, she's 27 now. You know what I'm saying? She's 27. Or you were married and y'all had kids. You know what I'm saying? Y'all had kids together. Now she has children, man. She has children. And it becomes a lot harder for her to get a male replacement. Because that man, unless he's got some money and he's he's an absolute, you know, simp and full-blooded beta. You know what I mean? He'll take it on. But basically... And having your children, you know what I'm saying? She's she's basically you know, yeah, and having your children. Uh, you know, the thing you gotta look at is man, you're a man. She had your children, you know, she she wasted the her youth. You know what I'm saying? Cause the thing is this when a woman gets married, man, it has to be forever you know what i'm saying as much as you have all these political pundits and propaganda messing with it you know telling her oh you could get divorced girl power and all this stuff no she loses her leverage if a woman got married to a man and and there's a lot of this going on they call it a starter husband you know what i'm saying it's a big saying now to start her husband where this man she's marrying him to divorce him eventually you know what I'm saying? A woman's youth will be wasted. So she wasted five years of her youth being married with you and she knew she wasn't going to stay. You know what I'm saying? She wasn't going to stay for forever or whatever. So that's five years. That's her youth. It's gone. That leverage is gone. And if she had your children, that further devalued her attraction and her leverage to other men. So if you look at it from that perspective, you're like, yo, man, she divorced you. She basically, for the sake of uh, for the sake of the propaganda and the agenda, she basically made her life a lot harder. You know what I'm saying? And and you know there will be a guy that there will they they're depending on her. There might be a guy that wipes her up anyway. But when you look at it. You know what I'm saying? That guy's wifing up in a situation you yourself wouldn't take. You wouldn't wife up somebody with two kids. You know what I'm saying? So why would you be jealous or angry of a man that, you know, that's wifing up a, a woman with two to three kids, depending on how many children you had? Now, of course, you know, you'll be worried about the safety of your kids. I'll, I'll get to that point. I'll get to that point later on. But the thing is, dude, you're a man. So let's say you get divorced and you're like 40 now. You're 40 and you're divorced. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? You're 40 and you're divorced. And you're like, you know what, man? I still want a woman. I still want to be a husband. I still want to be a father and all this. What you got to accept is that, dude, you having children wasn't wrong. 
You know what I'm saying? You finding a woman you want to be your wife or whatever, your main, uh, your the woman you're with in a relationship, that wasn't wrong. What was wrong was the location. The location was wrong. You know what I'm saying? The laws and the laws and the location. You know what I'm saying? L&L, laws and location. You know, so what I mean by that is, dude, you accept that and realize, yeah, you could have children and start over in another country. You know what I'm saying? You might have to go overseas to do it. And you could work here. And the thing I mean by that, like I was saying in step one, is that you need far less. So let's say, you know, with alimony, you're paying alimony, you're paying child support, and then you downsize your life here, so you're living on far less than before, you know, and you're uh, not living in a house anymore, you're living uh, in an apartment, or you're renting a room, or you might have downsized to a, like a mobile home or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You do, you do what allows you to be more flexible and free, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? So you could go overseas where the dollar's worth a lot more. So you need far less money overseas to start a new family than when you need it here. A lot of guys here, they'll get divorced. They'll get divorced in the States and say, well, you know, she was the wrong woman. Versus looking at the facts that, yo, man, you're in the wrong location, man. You're in the wrong location and the laws ain't right. You know what I'm saying? You're going to invest more. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? The investment you're putting in marriage. The thing is, this: a lot of guys in the States, they get married thinking, okay, man, this will be forever. When in reality, the only thing a man can guarantee in the West of what will be forever is your alimony checks. You know what I'm saying? Your alimony checks and um, I'm trying to, you know, your alimony checks and, um, you know, that that's going to be forever. You know what I'm saying? The alimony checks. The child support could be 25 years. Think about that. Your child support will outlast your marriage. You know what I'm saying? It will outlast your marriage. So that's the guarantees. The guarantees of marriage isn't the return. The return won't be, oh, man, I'm going to be a married man for the next 50, 50 years or till I die. You can't guarantee that. But you can guarantee the risk and what you'll lose. You know what I'm saying? That That's a higher probability than the return, you know, the loss. The loss is higher than the return. And then the loss has far more long-term issues, you know, long-term participation than the return. You know what I'm saying? The, you know, the loss of you getting divorced, you're going to be paying alimony for who knows when, forever or whatever. And child support, you'd look at it, I think, 18 to about 25 plus, depending on college and all that other stuff. So, you know what I mean? You got to look at it like that. And if you look at it, okay, you're divorced here in America. A lot of guys, like I said, they'll get divorced here and they get married again without thinking. And, and like I said, the black pill, the black pill perspective, the red pillars and all the lesser pillar guys, you know, MGTOW, whatever, will tell you, oh, he gets divorced, the probability of him getting divorced again increases. You know what I'm saying? The probability of him getting divorced again increases. When in reality, they don't explain why. The reason if a man got divorced and he'll get divorced again is that when he remarries here in the States, he signals to that next woman that, yeah, he's prepared. He's prepared for divorce. He's been through it, he has experience, and he can accept it. That him marrying you, him taking part in marriage again, is basically him volunteering for another divorce. So, of course, the man's second marriage will will, uh, will basically lead to a quicker divorce, because it's that old saying, fool me once, okay, you know what I'm saying? You got me. You know, fool me twice, I, I forget how that shit goes. I think it was fool me once, that's on you, fool me twice, shame on me, right? I don't remember that saying. But, uh, yeah, so... You got to look at it that when a man gets divorced and volunteers for another 
potential divorce, the woman that's with him sees that he's a glutton for punishment, that he accepts divorce. You know what I mean? He's with it. He's with it. He's about it. He ready. You could give him all that divorce smoke. You know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of guys here in the West, they get married again, divorce, divorce, divorce. The more divorces he gets, the sooner the next woman will divorce him because she sees that, yeah, man, this guy, he's built for divorce. You know what I'm saying? He accepts it. It's part of his life. You know what I'm saying? Because why would he get married again? Why would he get married again when the, the, the laws are against him? He's disadvantaged unless he accepts it and actually wants to be divorced. You know what I'm saying? Psychologically, he's fine with it. If she divorces him, hey, man, he, he'll he get married again. You know what I mean? So a lot of guys that if you want to get married, there's nothing wrong with you wanting to get married again. There's nothing wrong with you wanting to have children. I mean, back in the 1940s and 50s, guys were bypassing before no-fault divorce. Guys were bypassing the fact that polygamy was illegal by having a second family. You know what I'm saying? By having a second family. There used to be a saying that, you know, the town next door is dad's second family. And there was nothing wrong with that. If he could provide for two families, what's wrong with it? Nothing. You know what I'm saying? Nothing wrong with it. So what you do, you get divorced here, man. You don't jump back into the fire, you know, of domestically where you got divorced. You got to be aware that it was the law and the location that's the problem. The law and the location. So what you do is you go overseas, man. You might go to Mexico. You might go to uh, someplace in Eastern Europe. You know, you might go to the Middle East. You might go someplace in Africa. You know what I mean? You might go somewhere in the islands. You know, you go somewhere the dollar has far more value and you could start over with a new family. You could start over. Yo, your woman again, your, your wife that divorced you. You know what I'm saying? She's basically made everything harder on herself in her life. She spent over five years with her, her youth. She gave it to a relationship she knew she wasn't going to stay in. You know what I'm saying? She had children by you. You know what I'm saying? She's made ev She's basically given every other man a reason not to be with her. You, on the other hand, you're a man. You know what I'm saying? Give me a minute. Uh, yeah, you know, you're a man, so there's nothing stopping you from having another child. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing stopping you from uh, doing that. And you what? What you gotta do is this is the black pill, and you know this is the you know the, the you know the black pill is you understand that yeah man you fucked up man you know you accept what you've done wrong and all that stuff you accept that. You accept that it wasn't wrong that you wanted to have a family. It was the location you had a family that was wrong. You know what I'm saying? And you move on and you have a family somewhere else. And then and then think about it. With today's technology, you know, you, you have video chats. You could video chat and see your wife overseas, your girl overseas. You could go visit the kids once a month. And, you know, like I said, I've done another video. You can look it up called Overseas Wife. I did that two years ago, Overseas Wife. That's why I keep telling guys I'm ahead. Overseas Wife, I did that video two years ago. You could go watch it, whatever. But with today's technology, man, you can keep up with your family in another country. You know what I'm saying? Video chats. And the other thing is you got to look at it, and I've been saying this for over two years. Okay, let's say you spend, you get to go to, you get to go see your kids overseas once a month for like a whole week. You know what I'm saying? Once a month for a whole week or every two months, whatever, for a whole week. Some will argue, oh, that's not enough time, man. That's not enough time to see the kids and all this and that. But think about it. If you're working here, you're working here in the States Let's say you come from work, a hard days of work, you're struggling, hard day, hard day of work. You come home, now you got to get through your wife. You got to get through your baby moms, your girl, just to have time with your kids. You got to talk to her. You got to do all this bargaining, all this other stuff. You got to do just to have access to your kids 
for potentially 30 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Potentially 30 minutes. You might argue with her. You might have to do this and that. Instead of you come home to a good house, you just hold and take take some time with your kids, you know? So even if you're here domestically, you got to ask yourself, how much time do you really have with your kids when uh, you got to bypass your girl to see your kids? And then the other thing is if you even have custody, you know what I mean? That'll be another section of it. You know what I'm saying? So you got to look at it and say, yeah, man, you a man and you could always have another family. You know what I'm saying? Another family. You could always do that. Nothing, nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly natural. You know what I'm saying? And what you do is, you know, you take care of your alimony and your child support and all that stuff. And I'll get to that later on, you know, a little further. Give me a minute. Uh, let me see the phone. Yeah, oh, the battery's about to die. But, but yeah, yeah, the next step is, man, you got to realize that uh, you have to accept that you're no longer a father, man. You're no longer a father to your kids. You know, this is very painful for the westernized and feminized man. And the thing is, you know, I don't have kids yet, so I can't say, you know, I would know this pain yet, you know. So I know it's hard. It's going to be hard pain. It's it's very hard for you to do this. But the thing you got to accept, man, with divorce and potentially a custody battle is that, man, especially with a custody battle, I'm not saying you give up, but you, you fight within reason. You shouldn't be homeless fighting to see your kids. You shouldn't put that burden on your children. You know, you shouldn't put that burden that you went homeless fighting for custody or you went homeless trying to get custody in time. Because here's the thing, man. There's a lot of guys bragging about I get 50-50 custody. You know what I'm saying? I get 70, I get some time, whatever. Dude, you're the child's father. If you don't get 100% of the time when you want, you know, how does that count? You know what I'm saying? How does that count that you got men in the West bragging about, well, I get to see my kids 50% of the time. You know what I'm saying? Well, what kind of what kind of example you're setting that this this is fatherhood? You you having 50% custody of your kids. Or, or partial custody, whatever it is, one day a month, you know what I'm saying? You're basically normalizing it. You're basically tolerating it and saying, yeah, man, that's still me being a father. No, it ain't, man. A father will be there for their kids whenever the hell he wants to be. You know what I'm saying? That's fatherhood. It ain't no, yo, I get to see my kid once a week. You know what I mean? The biggest thing you got to accept is that, yeah, man, you got to look at your kids now as a bill, as a bill, like a phone bill. And this part is very painful. It's a very painful black pill for guys to, you know, to accept is that, yeah, man, they're not yours no more, man. They're not your kids no more. They're, they're a bill. They're a bill you got to pay every month, be it alimony, you know, for child support, whatever. They're a bill now. And then the worst thing is they're a strategical weapon now. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of guys that have had custody where they were set up, man. Where they would ha where they had their kid. I mean, there's a lot of guys that had custody and they were uh hanging with their kid and their kid came home and the mother made it look like he got his kids on he got his kids drunk, gave them alcohol or uh had them under the influence or drugged. You know what I'm saying? So your child now becomes a strategical weapon and becomes a strategical liability. You know what I'm saying? Because at any time, the mother could set you up. You know, a lot of guys got to realize, man, you know, if you want to prove you're a man during uh, the custody battles and all that, you tell the woman up front that, yeah, if I don't have access to my kids full time when I want, then those kids now are a bill. They're a bill to me. I will pay my child support, but I won't be in that child's life. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, they, they basically going to say, oh, you being a deadbeat. No, you're not. You're paying the bills. She chose 
for you to not be in your kid's life. When she put you on child support and destroyed access to you and being a whole as a family, she made that choice. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of men here in the West, they've been feminized. You know what I'm saying? A lot of men here in America, they've been feminized to believe that the less of a man they are makes them a man. You know what I'm saying? If you don't have access to your children when you want, then dude, you know what I'm saying? Then yo, you 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 you're not their fa you're not their father. You're not around there. She made a choice once she put you on child support. The choice was made to basically end that family, end that family unit. It's over. You know what I'm saying? And because of all the legal issues and potential potential games that could be played you know what i'm saying you're perfectly within your rights to say you know what man i send money to those kids and i don't really hang out with them i don't really see them because you know my baby mom's is literally you know her mind is gone and she's trying to basically set me up you know and these kids are bill now and the other thing is the other thing is this, man, you basically, in all honesty, once you're put on child support, you won't have the right to basically talk to your child until they're about 21. You know what I'm saying? 21, a full adult, because at 21, they could drink alcohol. You know what I'm saying? 21, they could drink alcohol. So that means your baby moms can't set you up with the alcohol trap by having the kid, you know, by by dousing or splicing the drinks of your kid to make them drunk. Then call the cops on you and say, oh man, he, he got my son drunk. You know what I'm saying? Basically, you won't be in your child's life until, you know, until 21. You, you know, the safest time for you to be in their life, talk to them, be around them unsupervised is 21 years old. Because at 21... You don't have to worry about alcohol. They're adults right now. They're adults. And a lot of a lot of kids growing up where their father wasn't around, when they become adults and they get around their father, that's when they say, well, you know, turns out my father wasn't a bad guy. You know, my mom won the custody case and kept him away. You know what I'm saying? So the safest thing for you to do now is to just be in your child's life when they're 21 and you explain to them why you can't be in their life, man, because, you you know, their mother could be setting you up. And even then, you can't really tell them why you can't really tell them it's their mother to a certain extent unless you want to. But you would tell her you would tell her, hey, man, you make these kids a bill. That's that's all they're going to get of me. They're going to get my money and they will never see me again. And we've seen that. There's a couple guys that are celebrities or athletes that do it. You know what I'm saying? Where they're like, nah, man, they're not in that kid's life ever. You know, so you see you see a guy like 50 Cent. You know, 50 tried to do things, but, you know, he eventually accepted that. Yo, it's done. You know, so you got to look at it like that, that, yo, that ain't your kid no more. There ain't no such thing as a father accepting 50% of custody, you know, claiming to be, that's my, I'm a father. I'm a good father. Cause I get, I get to be in my kid's life once a day, once a month. Come on, man. You know? And the thing is, that's why I've been telling a lot of guys, they fear manhood. If you wake up and understand you a man, you could have another kid. She, you know what I'm saying? She wanted to destroy the family, whatever. She got it. She got her decision. Because the thing is this, man, when you're paying child support and then bragging about it, well, you know, I take my kids to Disneyland, I, I spend a lot of time with them here and there, you're basically telling that woman she was in the right. She was in the right to put you on child support because you're going to go the extra mile anyway. You're not going to accept what's going on. You know what I mean? And it's a very traumatic thing, especially in the West, for you to think like this. For you to go to this um, perspective of manhood, it's it's a very uh, it's a very hard thing to do to get to this level. You know what I mean? To look at things for what they are. You know what I'm saying? And accepting it. You know, so that that's what you gotta do, man. If 
if a woman decides I'm gonna turn I'm gonna make your kids a bill, then so be it. There'll be a bill. You'll start your family, you you'll have another family overseas or something if you want to continue that. Another thing is, if you don't wanna have kids again, you know, mission complete, man. You you've uh you've expanded your bloodline. You know what I mean? Even though with with the father not being there, there's a high chance that your son and your daughter won't end up, you know, walking a straight path. You know what I mean? So, you know, there, there's a lot of that going on. So you got to accept that in the long term, she's walked away with far more collateral damage. Because at the end of the day, she's got kids now. You know, she's she's got a household to take care of. You know, depending on the payments you're paying, whatever. You know what I'm saying? There's different payments and stuff like that. But at the end, dude, you're a man. You know, so that's, I think, what is that? What is that? Three or four steps? You know what I mean? Uh, I think that's about three or four steps. You know? You know what I mean? When it comes to divorce, man. And, you know, like I said, you have to accept, man, you were in the wrong. You gave this woman all this power. You know? You got on one knee and told her that you're giving your manhood to the government for her sake. When in reality, you've basically abandoned, you've basically given away the man she fell in love with. The man she was with, the man that was free, that could walk away and be an adult. A man who had no liabilities. You know what I'm saying? That, that's what the West has become is that, you know, with the marriage laws being what they are and the child laws, you know, the family court laws being what they are, <clears throat> being what they are, being a man now in a long-term relationship is basically giving up your manhood. You know what I'm saying? Once you tie that knot or have children, you have children, you've basically given her the power of the court to get child support and all that. You saw Tom Brady where Giselle just took his kids. No telling them, this is how fucked up things are. You know, I used to watch this in the 90s where, yeah, the mom, I'm bringing the kids to my mom's house. They will just take the man's children. Like, he has no say. You know, it's okay for the woman to just kidnap his children. You know, she just took them to another, to the mom's home in the south, whatever it is. So, you know, you got to accept what's going on, man. Once you accept where you were in the wrong, you know, you over-invested. You know what I'm saying? You gave up your manhood once you surrendered to the state by saying, yeah, you know, I'm going to put the state above my manhood. I'm going to get on one knee, give her a ring. I'm going to marry her. And when I marry her, I basically gave her all the legal advantages to the housing. I can't make any decisions anymore. I'm under her supervision or divorce will happen and all that stuff, you know. But, uh, you know, the next step, the last step is, man, like I said, you got to don't fear the divorce, man. Don't fear it. You know what I mean? When you see the signs, you've already messed up. You, the man, Where you messed up is you. You got married. You know what I mean? You got you got involved with the system, the government. You know, so if you see any signs that, yeah, man, it's over. Disrespect. I come from work. I'm being disrespected. You know what I'm saying? There's no meal. There's no there's no care for me or my health or nothing. I'm out. You know, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing. So you you see any sign like that? You got to leave. You got to leave, man. A lot of reasons a lot of men are terrified of divorce is these men have been feminized. They've been feminized, man. You know what I'm saying? They become feminized and think, yeah, I spent all these years with her. Okay, dude, you're a man. You could still have kids. You know, you're like 45 or 50. You could still have children. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got a lot of stuff with her. You could downsize your lifestyle. You can minimize it. You know what I mean? So, you know, you th that's how you got to survive the divorce, man. You accept everything. You accept the role you played. You accept the fact that when you married her, you basically made her the leader in the relationship. You know what I'm saying? You made her the leader because she basically has full legal advantages against you with a false false domestic abuse cases, all that stuff. I mean, I saw a video 
where a woman just popped the tires of her husband and the cops just watched. They didn't lock her up or removed her. She had a knife and she was popping the tires. You know what I mean? The list goes on. So, you know, what you got to do, man, the final step is do not fear getting divorced. And the thing is, anytime you notice the signs, get it over with. You know, I did a video called, you know, live by the one strike. Any sign you see of disrespect, man, file it. Because you're better off being the person that filed the divorce than the person that didn't. You know what I'm saying? So that's what you got to do, man. Accept it for what it is and end it and move on. And like I said, with the kids and all that stuff, if the woman decides to make your children a bill, treat them like a bill. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be called a deadbeat anyway, man. Anyway, you're going to be called a deadbeat. I mean, we see the media, we see the news, we see TV films. The dad's paying money, taking care of his kids. He's still a deadbeat. You know, what you do is, yo, your kids are a bill, and it's going to be painful. It's going to be extremely painful for you to do to basically tell her, hey, you made my kids a bill, whatever. There'll be a bill. I'm going to give you this money, you know, I'm a, and you got to keep them away from me. You know, the only way I'll accept them is if I get full custody. If I don't get full custody, I don't want nothing to do with them when it comes to talking to them or being there because it's too high risk. I said you could be framed for uh, alcohol poisoning. I mean, there was a mother. What was it? She was on uh, Oprah where she had her children. She had her daughter say that the father was basically touching her and abusing her you know, sexually, and she spent no time in jail. No time in jail at all. And then came on TV and pretended she apologized. You know what I'm saying? This is what's at stake. A lot of men, you say, oh, this is, uh, you know, this is far from normal. Yeah, but when it happens to you, then what? What will you do if it happens to you? You know what I'm saying? So the thing you got to understand is this, man. You know, you got to, when it comes to divorce, you got to accept the role you played. You got to accept that you initiated this and you initiate it and you got a choice. You either got to end it or wait for her to end it. You know what I'm saying? Because all that's guaranteed now when it comes to marriage is the alimony. The alimony is guaranteed. You pay it until you die. And all that's guaranteed when you have children now is the potential of paying for child support. You know what I mean? That's why the West, really, it's we're in the overage. It's over, man. You know? And and at the end of the day, like I said, you're, you're a man. You're free to make your own decisions, you know? You're free to make your own decisions and do whatever you want. You want to get married, you do whatever you want. You're your own man. But the reason I, I'm saying this is that don't accept any sympathy from guys like us, man. Guys that are telling, you know... That have told you what's going on. Guys that see where you messed up and you're running away from accountability. You know what I'm saying? You're running away from accountability. And, you know, you won't see sympathy. That's why when you talk to guys like me or black-pilled guys, and you're like, oh, man, she took the kids. She did this. She did that. And we're just, okay. Okay, what, uh, what about it? She took the kids, okay, what about it? Okay, whatever. Okay. All right. She did. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? This is why you get less sympathy in the black pill community, man. You know, we knew the law. We knew the psychology. You got on one knee. You basically symboled that she's above you. You got on one knee. Then you gave up your rights as a man to the government, you know, once you sign that paperwork, you know what I mean, and made it official. So you made the government basically the the true man in the relationship, the true authority. You know, so you got to accept what's going on. This is why you don't really get... Yeah, the other aspect I almost forgot is, man, you got to you gotta basically, you know, the last step after a divorce is... You have to take a journey of self-discipline, you know, self-discipline. 
Because you got to look at it that you are willing to sacrifice not only yourself, but the livelihood of children by surrendering to the imbalance of the marital laws and long-term relationship laws of the, the, the West in a domestic state. So you have to take a journey of self-discipline where you will prove to yourself that you will no longer allow yourself to have your decisions clouded and, you know, very negative by choosing emotional output over logical output. So you're going to have to take a, a self journey, man, a self journey of discipline to prove to yourself that you can control yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because I always tell people, man, a lot of people say, well, the only person I trust is myself. But in reality, that's not true. You know, you should never even fully trust yourself because in all honesty, if you were to trust yourself completely, you'd give into all your desires. You'd give into all your desires. You know, most people would be old. Most men would be obese and and dead. You know, even yourself, you keep yourself within a certain level of limitations you know you can't even allow yourself to run wild you know what i'm saying run unchecked so you know you got to take a journey of self-discipline man that means you might have to go overseas you might have to uh join some type of group i don't know group for hunting fishing something to distract yourself and give you time to you know what i'm saying heal and uh, be aware of the mistakes you've made. And then what you got to start doing is really you have to prove to yourself that what you do now is based on logics, laws, you know, especially the law, you know, based on the law. Because a lot of men, man, there's a, the biggest problem in uh, in America you have with men here is how, how willing they're, how quickly they're willing to sacrifice the life of a child, you know. How quickly they're willing to sacrifice the life of a child, you know, you know, basically giving, you know, having a child with a woman that ain't qualified to be a mother, that isn't qualified to take care of a kid or, you know, what I'm saying isn't even mentally stable. And you're going to make that into a mother and have that child live with that. And you can't blame the child for bonding with their mom. That's their mom. That's. Who carried them and gave life to them it's your fault that the person who carried them and gave life to them wasn't qualified to be a mom you know what I'm saying you, you gotta accept accountability man once you accept accountability for what you've done and what's going on you can you can basically evolve man you know it's like I, I would say watch a video I made called the flat line theory Flatline theory says, you know, you got to be aware of what you can and can't control. You know what I'm saying? The sooner you become aware of that, the the healthier you'll be, man. Healthier you'll be in life. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be aware of what you can and can't control. And in being aware of what you can and can't control, you got to take responsibility and accountability for the fact that, yeah, man. You're the one who puts yourself in this position. And and the other thing is the woman ain't wrong. The woman ain't wrong to want to have a divorce because she doesn't feel some type of way. You know what I'm saying? She doesn't feel some type of way. You gave her the you basically gave her full authority in the relationship once you got married. And you gave her full authority once you had children in the West, you know. So you have to accept accountability. You know what I mean? And a lot of guys, the majority of Manosphere is built on removing men from accountability. So you can manipulate them for profit and try to make some money off of them. I, on the other hand, I'm here to just tell you like it is the black pill perspective. You know what I'm saying? Just tell it like it is. You might you might not like me after this, these after my videos. It is what it is. You know, you're your own man. You're free to like and not like who you don't like. It is what it is. Doesn't bother me. You know, 
So, uh, yeah, that's that's the divorce kit, man. You have to accept accountability. Blaming the woman and all that crap, that, that's not going to help you. That's you running away from your accountability. You know, oh, it, it was her fault. Look what she did, blah, 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 blah. Even though you surrendered absolute authority to her in the state. You know, but, uh, you know, this has been a divorce kit. Remember, check out the video, the pill kit on how to stay black pilled and uh you know there'll be more content on the way i got some things i gotta handle but uh peace out this has been hold the truth hostage where if the truth was so important we wouldn't negotiate with lies we would hold the truth hostage peace how long will it be for um hold the truth says hands up don't shoot just saying uh Oh, God. I, don't know. I do honestly oh, think so important, guys. So, so, so important. By the way, women are the majority of voters in the United States. Like that. Pill ill, y'all niggas better listen. I'm black pill ill, y'all niggas better listen. I'm black pill ill, y'all niggas better listen. I'm black pill ill, y'all niggas better listen. I'm black. I'm black pill, I'm ill with this will. 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 They said the truth won't survive beside the lies that maintain the decaying faces of this place. Female content creators help the Manosphere be balanced and prevent the formation of cults. She has agreed to an alliance with me and other balanced content creators who call out the bullshit and hypocrisies. I look forward to see the cat- How long will it be for, um, hold the truth says hands up, don't shoot. Just saying. Uh, oh God. I, I do, I honestly oh, think- man.